We're here with Garrett Nichols from Glaxo, and uh, you ha you're the project leader for the new integrase inhibitor from Glaxo, and you're in partnership with Shinogi. That's correct. And we want to explore this project, uh, this compound, which has just been kind of you know, brought very prominently to the international conference here in South Africa, and uh, a lot of uh, data that has been released, and I'm hopeful that you can kind of give us a background on it, uh, the importance of this this uh, new compound, and the, the hopes and the expectations. Sure, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, so the product is, or the compound, is uh, SGSK1349572, and it's a next generation uh, integrase inhibitor that's in phase 2A of development. So we just uh, finished our phase 2A study and presented the uh, at the conference today. Um, it's a very exciting compound for a couple of different reasons. Um, first of all, um, it's got unprecedented antiviral activity, and that's judged by the fact that it had a two and a half log drop from baseline uh, in HIV RNA over just 10 days of monotherapy. Um, and we did that with uh, with very low milligram uh, doses. Uh, that was with a 50 milligram dose. Uh, the compound is really the only once daily unboosted uh, integrase inhibitor that's currently in development. So really those are the things that, uh, that get us very excited about the compound. And you do have a backup compound, which means that uh, at this, and the same kind of relatively importantly close stage, which means that um, you'll not move forward with both, but at some point you'll drop that one in its place and move the other one forward. Well, we we're very excited about having two compounds, two integrase inhibitors. It demonstrates our commitment to this particular target. We do think that integrase inhibitors are uh, going to be the cornerstones of the future of pharmacotherapy, and so we move two integrase inhibitors uh, forward together in order, in order to have the best chances of uh, getting one of them to the market. It gives the consumer a little more hope and a feeling that, uh, that if should something strange that you're unforeseen pops up, you would actually have something else in the in the immediately behind That's right. to move forward with. That's right. Now, uh, this has, the, the profile is really amazing. Uh, the side effects are little to none. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Well, we've, uh, we've only dosed uh, for short time, for short periods of time, of course, uh, at this particular stage of development. So up to 10 days in HIV-infected patients, and then in a variety of drug interaction studies, we've dosed up to 19 days. Mm -hmm. But at present, uh, we have no uh, safety concerns with the compound. It appears to be generally very well tolerated. Uh, in the HIV-infected patient study uh, that we looked at today, there were no trends in terms of adverse events. The most common adverse events uh, were diarrhea and headache, and those occurred actually more commonly in placebo recipients than in recipients of 572. Okay. Small numbers, but nevertheless, Small numbers. It, it gives you that indication. Sure. Uh, the other thing is that's really exciting, I think, for people is, is, and more and more compounds today that are moving along seem to be looking at this, is the fact that you can actually miss a dose if, you, God forbid, we should have that happen, but or a late dose should not be a problem. That's, that's the indication that you would have at this point. Sure. Ad adherence is really important for uh, uh, for HIV pharmacotherapy, so we, we would always encourage people to take the, take their medications according to the way that they're prescribed. Uh, but the data that we presented today, the int one of the interesting uh, pieces was that in the patients who received 50 milligrams, they received it for 10 days and then dosing was stopped. We followed their viral load out for another four days and their viral load remained suppressed um, even four days after which suggests perhaps that this, uh, that this compound may have a bit of forgiveness. And this is primarily due to um, its long serum half-life. Uh, the drug has a half-life of 15 hours, which means that the concentrations actually three to four days after you take the drug are still sufficient to suppress the virus. That also means that any other drug that you're taking, uh, you have to be conscious of what, what that parameter is as well. It, yes. It just, it does, because otherwise you're on monotherapy. And which can cause yet another problem. Absolutely, you don't want to do that. The other uh, issue that we're looking at is the um, the we well, have the side effects. You have the improvements in the profile. Uh, are you looking at any of the uh, cross resistance issues with? Uh, other uh, other treatments? Yeah, absolutely. The way that this drug was engineered, the way that it was designed, was to solve two issues. Number one, to uh, to deliver once a day dosing for patients. And number two, to ensure that we selected a compound that would be able to treat raltegravir or elvitegravir resistance. Um, at this point, what we have is lab data, data in the test tube. Um, we've created mutants 
mutations, mutated virus uh, that has those mutations that are associated with raltegravir and elvitegravir resistance. For the mass majority of the vast majority of those viruses, we have activity. In addition, we've also uh, we've also obtained viruses from patients who are failing raltegravir-based therapy and have tested those in the test tube as well. And it appears once again that in the vast majority of cases, it appears that 572 will have activity against raltegravir resistant viruses. Now, that's what these, we're these are in the, these remain to be confirmed right. in the clinic, of exactly. course. Exactly, this is, this is low numbers and so forth. But the idea is that you now have a drug, if we're looking at things now, that's the way the, the scenario might play out. But at some point down the line, you're looking at maybe this would be a preferred drug. It seems like it could be uh, over raltegravir. And if so, then the raltegravir would be the backup for a person that might want to shift. So do you have any ideas about how that might play out? Moving for, I mean, you probably haven't looked at this, then, then uh, sequencing this, then raltegravir, have you? Or? Well, I, th I think that at this stage we're looking at the, the parameters of this drug being, you know, really good for all lines of therapy. So mm -hmm. as a once daily unboosted uh, drug, uh, with hopefully a higher barrier to resistance and more forgiveness. It is, it looks to be appropriate for frontline therapy or later lines of therapy as well. Um, what we need to determine obviously is its long-term uh, safety and efficacy in the clinic and we're very excited about uh, proving those per particular parameters in, in clinic patients uh, in phase 2B and onwards. Because today it seems as though the patients are looking at, uh, at least I hope so, uh, a treatment that they'll go on and maybe on it for 10 or 15 years. That's the Short yes. of the fact that they might, for any, what other reason, might want to move to something else. But if you're on a drug, that a compound, a combination that's really working well, it's great to think of it as a very long-term proposition. That's, that's exactly right. HIV therapy is lifelong, and the yeah. best regimens are those that are the most convenient and best tolerated, and that's the goal. Right. Are there any uh, chances that this might be a, uh, uh, are you looking at fixed dose combinations? I guess everything is still on the table, right? Sure, sure. We, the, the benefit, the other benefit of this compound is that it's got very low milligram dosing. Mm -hmm. So in our planned phase 2B studies, which will be starting this month, mm -hmm. um, we're studying doses from 10 to 50 milligrams. So very low doses. Uh, the formulation is very amenable to combinations with other antiretrovirals. And so fixed dose combinations are a part of our, our, our thinking at this point. So this could be exciting. And now I'm hopeful this is exciting for the third, third developing world. Uh, which is where we are right now. I'm, I'm hopeful that this is something that uh, if the, some of the newer drugs come in the second and third line treatments, which would be, is going to be something that could be affordable. I, I certainly have. That's nothing you can answer, I imagine. Sure, sure. But it, it's exciting that, that we might have this problem, especially since it's a small amount of drug that you're actually using, that you're probably using a lot of excipients to make up the pill. And it is a pill, is it? That's correct. Okay, it's so it's like a pressed uh, it's a tablet. That's tab correct. Tab press tablet. That's correct. Uh, but we are, you know, we, we are focusing on the needs of patients, and one of the big areas of need, certainly identified in this part of the world and elsewhere, is the need of pediatric patients as well. Mm -hmm. So, also very important in our development plan is a is a very aggressive plan to uh, to study this particular compound in pediatric patients, and plan to start those studies at the same time that we start our phase three studies. Mm -hmm. In other words, when we know what is the best dose, you know, is to move any, forward. Is there any concern? Concerns for uh, heat stable or, or um, temperature, moisture, nothing like that. No, no uh, not not at this stage. No, no. Not at all. All right. Is there anything else you'd want to care to offer? Because I, 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 I mean, so far, you know, tell me something bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't be more excited about what the data that we have today. Obviously, um, we're, we're here in phase two. Uh, we have a limited amount of data, but we couldn't ask for very much more yeah. of the compound at this particular stage. Right. It's once daily. It's unboosted. It's got great antiviral activity and a superior resistance profile. So we're really excited about giving, getting it into the clinic and. Uh, and demonstrating what it can do long term. Well, what about timeline? Where are we looking at? Uh, is this still uh, expanded access, or what does that timeline look like? You know? Well, we're, we're getting ready to kick off phase 2B, so we'll start our, our dose range finding studies uh, this month. So just, uh, just in about a week or so will be our first uh, visit as far as that's concerned. Once we identify doses, then we'll start rolling into, into phase three. And if all goes according to plan, that hopefully will happen by the end of next year. And the single pill itself will be small. That's correct. Okay. People always like to hear that. That's okay. correct. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank I you. It.